YouTube. This is like a follow up video from the, the 60 watt amplifier. Um, this one's somewhat stripped down that I built and although it sort of worked it wasn't very good at all and there wasn't really any information on the website I got it from uh, which was talking electronics now generally when I go to this website most of the things I've built here they work and they work first go and that's great but this seems to have a problem and I understand now that this isn't actually um, a circuit that's been made by the author of talking electronics this is an old circuit and I think what he was talking about on here was he was talk talking about the long tail pair and the difference that it makes um, using that in a circuit. And so what I did was, rather than just blow this out all together, because it's quite a simple circuit, look at it, that's pretty simple. Rather than just like blow it out all together, I went and found some more information and found a 30 year later updated version of this circuit, which is this one. A little bit more complex, um, certainly different output transistors, and but this is what's considered to be, as it can be seen, it is not a complex amp, but the performance is excellent. Okay, now I'm sure that the performance is excellent on this if it is set out the way that the author has prescribed, and he he does say that because they build the boards for this. So this is a circuit, which is, it's got a copyright on it, but you're allowed to use it not for profitable things. So for me building it for this, that's fine. For me building an amp for myself, that's fine. But if I was to start selling these and trying to say it was mine, that would be wrong. Um, so that's not what I'm doing, of course. All I'm gonna do is, because on my channel, I find circuits on the internet and I build them and Fingers crossed, hopefully they're workers and we get some fun out of it. And this is another one of those. So I have started to build it and I drew it out here first. And the reason why I draw it out is because it's okay. It's great seeing it there. Don't get me wrong. But drawing it out means I'm just getting more and more familiar with the circuit. So as I'm building it, I've got more memory to recollect. Oh, I don't remember that being in the correct place. Um, in that place, so it's, it's easy for me to go back. So I, I draw it out, and it's, it's great as a little reference to my thing as well. This is the ampl this is the uh, power supply for it. Now I've got the parts for the power supply. That's not a problem. I've got a 25025 transformer. I've got lots of capacitance, and I've got a nice big old big rig bridge rectifier down there. That's not a problem. What I do have a problem with is with all these chips. Because these, these are the BD140s here, the 139s. Now, for this circuit, I'm going to use those. Because this is my, let's just get it going with what I've got circuit. And then, I've put in, I'm putting in an order at the minute. Um, let's just hope that's there. Yep, yeah, putting in an order at the minute with DigiKey for all the parts. Because where I normally go, which would be far now. Um, they don't have these um, these particular transistors. Look, they're all rated 350 volts, uh, 15 amps on the big power transistors going out, and um, and four amps on the drivers for them. And I need these pots as well, 2K precision turn pots. I also need the um, half watt um, resistors because there's a couple of 3.3 Ks here. They've got to be half watts here. This 10. 10 ohm here has got to be a, uh, a half watt as well and these 2.33s have got to be 5 watts each um, wire wounds. so that's quite important for this and it's important to have a more to turn part also just for the sake of um, the layout me starting off the layout I've used uh, BC 5, uh, 457s here um, just to enable me just to be positioning on this uh, on this board of course, I'm not going to be using that when the new ones come in, or I may just use it just for this because I got these. Uh, I got some cheap power transistors, um, which are. Let me just take you back to this, da, 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 which are the NJW, but I think I've got NJL thirteen oh two. They're the same thing. It's just that like the package is slightly different. One of them's. Uh, what is it? RHOS compliant. It was not lead free, Jobby, basically. 
So I've got the cheap ones, but these are the ones that are the top ones for this, these MJL 4302 and the MJL 40, 4281, which is what I'm ordering from Digicom. Uh, Digicom? Is there such a place? Digicom? Digikey. And that's, even though it doesn't actually show you any numbers on there, and they're the driver. They're just generic, so aren't they? So that's not very good at all. Yeah, so, so that's where we're going to go. So this is the next one that you see me. I'd have built this up, or let me speak. If I'm going to carry on doing this, I may wait until the other parts come in, because like I said, I need those other resistors. I can't just bang this together with anything if I want it to work. I can use these cheaper chips. I can use the driver chips I've got. BD140, BD139, that's not a problem. And I could also use TIP35, TIP36 instead of these. Uh, just, to, just to get it going, just to have it going. But I'm pretty confident this is going to work. Now, I may end up, I may end up getting all the components that I need to build this and I may end up just buying the boards, the proper board to, to fit these on. That that may end up being what happens because you know I've been looking around and I've decided I'm, I want to build myself my own discrete amp but not my own design of course because I'm a noob to all this, I can't just design this yet. There's guys out there building amps, 20, 30 years experience and run into issues so for me just to be a noob not even two years into this um, since the concept of me actually doing this um, to just be able to build an app I think it's just a bit too far fetched for me at this time but to copy them uh, not for profitable gains of course but just to copy them from experience um, and to help me get familiarised with the components, the layouts, and all this sort of stuff, especially grounding and things like this, because it's quite important that you don't make loads of loops. Um, and there's more factors than the grounding, but I'm not going to go into it too easy to be criticised. But we know that there are. Um, hmm. So, yeah. So, all I can do really is when I get these parts in, is finish this off. I'm sure I'm gonna do a little something in between. The sunlight's coming across quite nicely now, but it's blocking out half of what I can see here. Um, yeah, so I am gonna place that order, and I'm just gonna wait for however long that takes. I'm just gonna double check again that there's nothing else I need to buy, um, just because it costs I guess, 12 pound for delivery or 13 pound for delivery. Wow, they sting you on that. You only want a couple of transistors and it costs you a couple of pounds, but it's going to cost you £13 on delivery. Whew, never mind. Okay, so, oh yes, and uh, these, uh, I need to get the BD, um, the, the, the BC 546s. As it says, it needs a 546. And the reason why it needs a 546 is because you've got the, the higher voltages. You've got to think you've got an 80 volt um, collector emitter. And a, a and a, uh, another voltage, another highish one sixty on the. Uh, I can't quite remember, but there, that's what's needed. The five four sixes. So I have got some coming, um, and hopefully they'll be in a couple of days. But I'm also probably going to put some on the DigiKey list as well, just to. Well, I want to do it. I'll probably just buy ten off DigiKey because one, I want to see what the difference is between them and the cheap ones I get off eBay. See if there's any anything looks any difference. And I would prefer to put the better ones, if there is a difference between them, onto the finished product. Because like I said, I found a VU driver and VU meters, which, to look at them on the photo, look really good. But sometimes when you get VU meters, it doesn't automatically mean that they're going to be as good as they look on the photo. Especially depending on where they come from. And there's some lovely cases out there, uh, lovely enclosures, but... It would just be nice to see if I can get this uh, working in the first place. I'll get that built up, but I'm wondering whether to do this. I want it to be a separate power supply, so I can plug the power supply into the amplifier to power the amp and then disconnect the power supply when I want to use it for something else. I think that's the, the best way of doing that. But I shall return when I've got a bit further with this. Like I say, I'll, I'll get these on, I'll get the, the other parts in, and um, and I'll show you this one, 
And if this one's a success, which I'm fingers crossed it's going to be, if it's not, it's going to be down to what I'm doing. I'll just have to keep going over and keep going over until I figure it out. Uh, and then I'll build either using the same sort of layout two, two channels onto these type of boards, or I may end up buying the proper board from the place that, that has the circuit and um, building it onto there and then building it into an enclosure and having a nice little nice little but rather powerful amp here. Alright, all right, I'll see you in the next one.